Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, March 8th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. Today's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading defamatory or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those of uh, our community who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors and staff and experts who will participate in this evening's meeting. I invite your decorum over the course of the meeting. I advise at this time that I have regrets from Councillor Duncan. Let us move first then to item 2.1 pertaining to pecuniary interest for the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices. Provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with pecuniary interest or perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have already declared in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare an act at any point in the meeting. And I have a list here of people who've reached out ahead of time. So, Councillor Andreessen, why don't we start with you? Welcome to tonight's meeting. Thank you, thank you Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, through you, I would like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 3.5 regarding the Listowel Agricultural Society um, response around the Huron Perth Egg Science Centre. Currently, I am a board member and director of the Listowel Agricultural Society. And um, consequently, I'll also declare um, a conflict for 13.1. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Councillor Anstead. Welcome to tonight's meeting, Councillor Anstead. Thank you, Mary Kaysenberg. Uh, this evening through you, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.4.1, the accounts, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstett. Uh, next up is Councillor Behrens. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I will declare a conflict of pecuniary interest on 5.4.1 and 13.1 as I have grandchildren, grandchildren attending both the North Perth Spinwright Child and Family Centre as well as the St. Mary's Daycare and after school programming at both locations. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Behrens. And next up is Deputy Mayor Kellum. Welcome to tonight's yes. meeting. Yeah, nice to, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I'd like to declare pecuniary interest on 5.4.1 with regards to the accounts with uh, special to the uh, Perth Metals accounts as my mother and father-in-law are tenants there and as well to the confirmatory dialogue of 13.1. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Kellum. And to the other councillors who I didn't get to more personally welcome. Welcome, and over the course of the meeting, I look forward to your engagement. Uh, to explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us tonight. To some extent, I do this alphabetically. Should a councillor uh, not wish to respond to a request from the chair, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. 
we will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This of course is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you're not audible, I will call on you. I'll uh, also uh, ask you to maintain a mute state during our web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. And I think you know the process. <clears throat> Let's turn then to item 2.2 on our agenda. I have a motion for the adoption of the agenda of tonight's meeting that reads as follows that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Why don't we start with Deputy Mayor Kellum? Will you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings us to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed before us because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item fr from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are six items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? If so, please indicate in the web chat function and the clerk will maintain the speaking order. Okay, we're not seeing anything uh, coming through there, so... Uh, let's have uh, a look at the resolution that is proposed with regards to this matter that consent items 3.1 to 3.6 be received for information and the minutes of the March 1st, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Richardson, can I call on you to be our members tonight? I will move that motion. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to the meeting. And uh, Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you very much and welcome to you as well. Uh, councillors, any discussion or debate on the consent agenda resolution? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Just checking with the clerk. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Let's move on then to uh, uh, item four on our agenda. Uh, according to uh, the, the preparations, we have no uh, public meetings for this evening's uh, council session. Further, we have no delegations that have asked for an audience with council this evening. That allows us to move forward to item five, uh, reports from key departments and staff. Uh, for tonight, um, we have uh, a report under item 5.1.1, uh, which outlines current staff concepts that might be the subjects of an additional grant application to the current intake of the province's municipal modernization grant funding process. Staff is seeking consent to proceed with the submission of an application to the province of Ontario for a project which builds on some previous work done with the last grant we received under this program. I'm sure I'm stealing CAO, Snell, CAO Snell's uh, thunder here, but we'd like to invite him to offer some comments. So welcome, Mr. Snell. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, as Council is aware, in 2019, the Miss Pally North Perth applied to intake one of the Municipal Modernization Program, and we completed um, that review with KPMG, which, which was presented to Council earlier this year. Again, earlier this year, the province announced um, the second intake of the Municipal Modernization Program, and the province is investing $40 million to um, help um, modernize small and rural municipalities. 
I won't go through the specifically the criteria um, for the program, but we are really looking at following up on the recommendations from um, the first report um, from KPMG, looking to digitize and improve our, our service delivery aspects. Really, we're looking to do this by um, the one recommendation was to um, go paperless and also look at other accounting software that will improve our efficiency. So we have um, looked at the price um, um, for um, a paperless solution for the municipality, as well as looking at upgrading our council module um, for, for council, meeting, um, council meetings. The other component of this is training um, to conduct staff management training across the organization, which was also a recommendation, as well as continuous improvement training um, for service delivery. The continuous improvement training um, being recommended by KPMG was um, Lean or Lean Six Sigma. However, um, we can use that documentation to support um, the application, but at, at that point we can choose any um, style of lean or, or um, change or, or efficiency training um, at, the, at the time of the process. So that doesn't mean we're, we're stuck to um, using um, the Lean Six Sigma. So at this time, we're seeking um, council support and applying um, for the application. It is a 65-35 split. And if successful through the application process, we will bring back a budget amendment and I'm certainly willing to answer any questions council may have. Thank you, CEO Snell. Um, I take note that you uh, you have considered the uh, training options, uh, the learn options around this. As you know, I'm uh, uh, one who believes that Lean Six Sigma was developed for manufacturing and we're not a manufacturing environment. So I think there are uh, other uh, options available to us and I'm glad you've considered that. Uh, councillors, do you have any questions about this report or first comments? We're not, we're not seeing any. Uh, so I have a resolution then for our consideration. It reads as follows: That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, Perth support the municipality's application submission to the Municipal Modernization Program Intake Two for the implementation of the North Perth Administrative Processes Efficiency Review with a focus on digital modernization and staff training recommendations of the review. And I'd like Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that one. I'll move that, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, Mayor Todd, I will second that motion, thank you. Thanks, any discussion or debate on this one? Okay, seeing none, let's have the vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, CAO Snell, for that uh, report. And uh, let's uh, cross our fingers on this one. Um, next up, then, is item 5.2. We have uh, no report uh, indicated from the uh, clerk's uh, department at tonight's meeting, but I know that our diligent, hardworking team continues their efforts to better our community. And I'm sure grateful that I have one immediately in front of me and, and one that attached to us tonight through digital services, uh, helping us with our meeting and all of the work of council. We do appreciate your service. Um, next up then is item 5.3, reports from the manager of programs. And uh, we have something special happening tonight. So let me just get my notes here. Uh, staff has brought forward their report as cover to a report from shift landscape architecture pertaining to this council's options regarding the redevelopment of the Listool Memorial Arena site. I'll ask North Perth manager of programs, Amy Gangle, to provide us with an overview of the request that's made of us and provide her with a discretion to call on the consultants for their report. I won't intervene further, Ms. Gangle. Go ahead, welcome. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. 
Yes, just some highlights before I hand uh, the presentation over to Michael and David. So um, we engaged Shift Landscape Architecture in the providing consulting services for us to assist us with the Memorial Arena Park redevelopment plan. Uh, there was a lot of uh, public engagement, engagement with Friends of 59, with Recreation Advisory Committee, uh, members of council and staff, all involved with this process. Uh, so even with it being in a virtual format, we're very pleased with the public input and, uh, and responses that we've received um, and uh, also presented it to the Recreation Advisory Committee last week on March 2nd, 2021. Uh, overall, the Recreation Advisory Committee very, very pleased with the outcome of this report. They do feel it reflects good uh, or very well on the public input and comments. Uh, they can tell that uh, the consultants listened to the public and were able to come up with some concepts that the community can be very proud of. As a result, the Recreation Advisory Committee approved approved the Recreation Master Plan report and requested it to be forwarded to North Perth Council for consideration. So we've, uh, with all, uh, without any further ado, I will pass the uh, presentation to Michael Barker, um, as well as uh, with David Duhan from Shift Landscaping, and they will be able to provide highlights with regards to the presentation. Thank you, Amy. And Pat, I'm just confirming that I am able to share my screen now. Looks like it. Okay, thank you, Amy. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Mike Barker, and my office, Shift Landscape Architecture, has been working with North Perth over the last four months or so, developing concept ideas for the Memorial uh, Arena site. So tonight, my colleague Dave Duhan and I will review the final concept and the work that has led up to this point. So on the screen, you see our project timeline. We started working on the project in November of last year, 2020, and started with a site analysis and an understanding of the context, learning about the community and so forth. On November 17th, we had the opportunity to meet with the Recreation Advisory Committee and Friends of 59, specifically Peter Leppard and Keith Bender. And then following that meeting, we developed two concepts, which we shared with town staff and stakeholders, including yourselves, of course, and then followed that the public had two weeks on which to comment through the USA North Perth uh, platform. So after all of the feedback was received, we developed a summary report, which we shared with, uh, which we shared with township staff. And since that point, we have developed a, a concept master plan, and that's what we're going to share with you tonight. Next, next slide, Dave. So, of course, you're all very familiar with the site, but just to ensure, um, this orange box that you see on the screen was the project site for our scope of work. So generally, the, the arena footprint and the associated parking lot um, with that, that, that was associated with the arena. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Dave, and I'm going to uh, cycle back in towards the end of this and, and discuss some of the costing. Dave? Thanks, Mike, and uh, good evening, Council and Mayor. Um, so I'm going to get into a bit more of how we actually engage with the project, and this is really going to build on that timeline that Mike has already outlined. So in mid-November, Mike and I had the opportunity to meet on site with Amy and uh, Operations Supervisor Mark Crabb to walk around and through the arena and actually get a sense of the site, but also, and probably more importantly, learn a bit more about its history. So this was a really great opportunity for us and we consider ourselves really lucky and fortunate to have had a chance to see the space firsthand and hear some of the stories shared by Amy and Mark. And this gave us a foundation to begin to think about how we might actually capture some of that rich history and the significance of the arena through our work. Later that day, we participated in the Rec Advisory Committee meeting at the Steve Kerr Memorial Complex, and Pete Leppard and Keith Bender, who are two of the Friends of 59, were able to join the meeting and share some of their perspectives on the project itself. So for this initial meeting, the intent was really for us to listen. We were there to hear what everyone had to say. As outsiders, we wanted to understand how RAC and the Friends of 59 really envisioned the future of the Memorial Arena site itself. 
So during the discussion, it became very clear to us that the space should foremost be focused on honoring the eight lives lost in 1959 with some type of memorial. But beyond this, something that we heard was that it is also important to create something that brings the community together. So we heard that the memorial is critical, but the site should be more than that and support life, fun, celebration for new generations and everyone who is gonna be using the space. So the arena is really a social hub in the community and this one especially, and this was something that was very important to the group. With the arena gone, how can we begin to maintain that social aspect and any future plans for the site? A final part that was really clear to us after this meeting was that the space needs to be multi-seasonal, supporting summer and winter activities, and keeping an opportunity to skate on site as that direct connection to the arena was also something that was really well supported. So taking all of that really great input that we heard at that meeting, um, and along with the support from staff, we began to develop two concepts for the site. So these are the two preliminary concepts that we produced, and these brought together all of the input received from the Rec Advisory Committee, Friends of 59, and staff, and it presented two different options for the future park space. So these should both be pretty familiar to you, as they're the concepts that were shown through pub public engagement. And the intent was to present two options that each provided a range of potential solutions for the space. So given that we weren't able to meet people face to face as we normally might, we used the municipality's Your Say North Perth platform, and that really structured all of our engagement. So this included a pre-recorded video outlining the overall project and two concepts that was narrated by Mike, as well as supporting documents. Uh, we had images there, we had other information to really try to capture as much information about the project as possible. So for the first two weeks of the engagement, that was open to council, uh, the Rec Advisory Committee, Friends of 59, and then the following two weeks uh, was open to the general public for input. And overall, I can't understate this, or sorry, I can't overstate this. Um, we were so happy and incredibly thrilled with the response we received for a project like this in a community of this size, receiving 245 survey responses. To us, this just really, uh, it's a good response and it truly reflects the importance of the space to the community. So we were very happy about that outcome. So once we went through this public engagement process, uh, we were able to go through the input that we received and uh, overwhelmingly we found that concept one was favored by a majority of the respondents and that was about 54% of people. The comments that came in suggested that the memorial aspect, the open lawn area, and the potential for ice or an activity space were very important parts of that design. Of the comments that we received around concept number two, people really liked the idea of a survivor's grove, uh, as well as a harvest table. And then there was also a lot of attention to berms and pathways throughout the site. The pathways were a really important piece. There were a few pieces that were also shared between both concepts, uh, a lot of trees and the idea of a sensory playground. And these really came across as things that people liked overall, regardless of the concept. So one thing that did come up during this was, uh, and through this, this was through surveys as well as the idea posts, was the desire for a dog park. So we noted this and we discussed it with staff, but the site was ultimately determined not to be the location for that type of future use. So taking all of that information, we were able to collect from uh, Friends of 59, RAC, Council, the public through this process of engagement. We developed a final master plan, master plan for the Memorial Arena site, which you're seeing up on the screen right now. So this design, it's largely based around the overall layout of the first concept, which we got a lot of good feedback about. Um, and it reflects a lot of what we heard through that consultation. But it also brings in those elements I mentioned from concept two that were really well received. So this final plan uh, really represents a hybrid from the things that people liked from both concepts altogether. So looking closer at this master plan, I'm gonna now highlight a few various elements of it uh, and really show how this space came together. If there are any aspects that need further information or explanation, I'm happy to address that afterward. So on the west side of the site, uh, just you're going to see a few things pop up and be highlighted as I go through this, but on the west side of the site is Maitland Avenue North, uh, and that's where it intersects kind of with Palace Street East. And in that area, we're proposing what could be kind of seen as that main park entry. So this area we're proposing includes a community event or market space, a variety of seating options, and we also have the advantage of this area overlooking the baseball diamond. So this is a rendering, uh, rendering image of what we kind of envisioned the space to be. 
So with, with that, we have a relatively open atmosphere that could be adapted to serve different events and something that would vary from season to season. For example, we've proposed small grass seating berms or hills that could be that ideal spot to sit and look down over the baseball diamond and watch a baseball game. As well, we have a small plaza that could be a location for a market or festival area. It could even expand the nearby farmer's market area or also be a potential location for Patty Fest in the future. So here are a few images just to show a bit of flavor of what we envision this space to be. So we have a grass seating area, the potential for food trucks or market stalls to come to this part of the site. And with the grass berms, we want to ensure that there's seating for everyone. So we're also proposing a variety of benches and other seating options that would support different ages and different uses at different times of the year. The next part of the plan that I want to highlight are the meadows and pathways throughout the site. So through public feedback, as I mentioned before, we heard that many people would use this type of element in a park. Pathways were very, very popular. So we included a number of different paths and different routes that wind through the park and pass through uh, meadow-like vegetation and different landscape. And so with that, you can imagine going to the park and having different experiences where you don't have to always just walk around one loop, but you can see the park from different angles and different directions. Here are a few examples of these type of pathways. We always recommend very practical items like a mow strip, which you see on each side of the path that can be easily cut down by the width of a lawnmower. Um, and the meadows that we are proposing in some areas are intended to be very durable, low maintenance, and something that has seasonal and native flowers and other species that are not only attractive, but also support biodiversity on the site. In other locations, we're proposing more structured planting. Uh, so we've included a grove-like space as well as some more formal gardens, which I'll touch on in a few minutes. At the very center of the site is a large open lawn area, and this is intended to support a lot of flexibility in use. At times, it could be a space to kick a soccer ball or throw a football. At other times, it could host a community movie night. And at other times, it can be a skating surface. This area will really be a new space within the community. And because of this, how it will be used is going to be something that changes over time as this community discovers the space, uses it uh, from season to season. And having spaces like the open lawn allows us that adaptability for the community to really make it their own. Another aspect of the open lawn is related to the location of the former arena ice surface. So we intend to mark center ice and the center line of the space with the type of inlay that will not impact the use of the field, but it'll still commemorate the former arena. So the image up in the top right is just one example of how this could possibly be done. At the southern corner of the site, there's two more related spaces that we're proposing, the sensory play area and the survivor's grove. One of the important things that we heard through the Recreation Advisory Committee from the Friends of 59 and the broader community itself is that the tragedy of the collapse extended beyond those who lost their lives. It was an event that impacted the community and it still affects individuals who live with that event to this day. The intent of the Survivors Grove is to introduce a space that brings the community together and it also looks ahead to future generations as well. One key aspect of this survivor's grove is a harvest table, or we might think of it as a community table that provides a gathering point and can, it can accommodate different individuals or larger groups. And this was something that came up a lot through our engagement process that people really liked. You can imagine different camps using the space, people having lunch, but it can really be flexible and support a variety of uses. And from this table, the visitors would be able to look out over the open lawn or over to the play area. And we can really imagine the space where fam different families could come together or individuals could have their own place uh, along this larger table within a grove of trees. The other element that I mentioned in this area is sensory play. And this was very well supported by the community as well. Sensory play, it's not really a familiar term, but what it means is essentially a play experience that's unique and different from what we might consider uh, in air quotes here, typical play elements. So we introduce things like very durable wood, uh, pathways to explore, a variety of different, um, different alternate features. And we can really create a space that supports imagination, yet still remains accessible to everyone. And as I mentioned earlier on, the sensory play element was something that was really, really popular within the survey results uh, in our public engagement process. The last area that I want to highlight is what we could consider the, the sacred ground within this master plan, and that's the memorial space. 
As is highlighted on the slide right now, the memorial space is a series of three separate but connected pieces. We have the main space, which is circled, uh, and that overlooks the open lawn and the center ice marker. And this all visually connects to a grove of eight flowering trees. So this is a view of standing within that memorial space, looking out to those that grove of trees. So within here, we would have a sculptural element that really captures the experience that you might get going to an arena and looking out over the boards. And this is joined with eight pairs of bronze skates resting along the bottom of the boards. Being in here, visitors are really given an opportunity for contemplation and remembering the event while also looking out to the new park space. Uh, it's intended to be both a moment to reflect on the history of the site, but also look out to what it has evolved to. For this sculpture, we really envision it to be a combination of three materials, stainless steel for the upright frames, bronze for the top of the boards and the skates, and a concrete for the board wall. And we also showed it in the previous slide, but there's an opportunity to include names into the wall itself here. The last piece of the memorial feature, which as I mentioned, is kind of three distinct elements that go together. Uh, when standing at that memorial, eight flowering trees would be planted across the open field. And we'd select these to stand out. And like the park itself, this is something that's gonna continue to grow and change over time. You can imagine uh, standing in the memorial space in the spring, not too far from where we are right now in the year, and seeing these eight trees in bloom across that open lawn. So combining the memorial feature, the center ice marker and the trees creates what we hope is a meaningful and compelling way to honor those who lost their lives in the collapse, as well as the other individuals in this community who were impacted by the event. The overall master plan, it's intended to support many different uses and knowing that some of these uses that we expect right now might change and new ones will be revealed as the space is used over time. And of course, at the very center of this, the design remains focused on the history of the site and the importance of the space for the entire community. So now I'm gonna hand it back to Mike and he's gonna to touch on some costing as well as the next steps for this project. Thanks. Um, so on the screen, here's the cost estimate and I won't, I won't go through this. I know you have it in the report. I just wanted to point out, there's nothing too unusual or surprising based on the, the scope of the project. Um, the pathways and the parking are the single biggest uh, line items, the biggest elements, which again is not surprising, especially given the number of parking spaces. Um, and then of course, um, site prep and grading carries fairly large numbers as well. Um, so staff did ask us to look at an option for phasing. And I suppose uh, there could be a variety of different ones, but the one that seemed to work the best and be most efficient you see here. Um, on the top, what we what are, we are proposing is phase one and accounts for about seventy five percent of the of the uh, of the cost. And then on the bottom would be the second phase, and that's about twenty five percent. Again, related to cost. I think the nice thing about this breakdown is that the second phase could happen pretty cleanly without affecting what would at that time be an operating part of Memorial Park. So you could imagine if the first phase were constructed there could be a, a construction fence erected and allow that parking lot and sensory play to be built um, at a, in, a, in a, you know, a, future, a future phase, a couple of years later, for instance. Um, so again, this is a phase one costing and I know you have it in front of you, so I won't read through it here. Um, but when we phase, there are of course some costs that get repeated such as mobilization, insurances, fencing again. So it's important to recognize that with phasing, um, there always is always is a increased cost. And then uh, if we look at the phase two costing, um, similar, similar sorts of things. And it's important to note that what we haven't accounted for is it's really uh, very challenging at this stage without knowing what the possible phasing would be, but is the potential increase to construction costs. And then of course, just general inflation that, that, may, uh, that may happen if the project were say phased over five or six years you could imagine a significant increase that way. So just to finish up, um, here's a look, uh, it's a high level look, but at next steps. And, and just for your, for your understanding, this is outside of our current scope for the project, but sort of what we imagine would be the next steps. Um, as I understand it, staff would be looking at funding opportunities for this project. Then you would wanna undertake detailed design. So looking at some of those things we've spoken about tonight and how they might come together. And that's going to support the development of contract documents, 
So then, of course, you can go to tender and, and hire a, a contractor in order that we can build this park. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. It's been a, a pleasure to work on this project with, uh, with staff, and it's been an important one to us. Um, so we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And if we don't have the answers tonight, we'll endeavor to get those for you. Thank you, team. Um, please angle any, any wrap up remarks from you at this point. I'll ask you to put yourself on mute, uh, Michael, if you don't mind. Um, Ms. Gangle? Uh, yes, just uh, thank you very much for Shift Landscape Architect. Um, uh, we as staff and we as Recreation Advisory Committee do feel that um, we've been heard. Uh, the messages and, and uh, summaries from the community have been heard. The comments that we've received have been positive and everybody's been very appreciative that we've been uh, listening or that they've been listened to. And um, really the overall atmosphere is the community is excited uh, to see this concept to uh, and, and where our future lies with this property. So thank you very much for uh, on behalf of uh, the municipality. Thank you very much to Shift Landscape. And uh, we are here as well to answer any questions council may have. Thank you. Uh, this is a significant venture. I would imagine councillors have uh, some questions. So uh, let's open up to questions at this point in time. Uh, again, indicate through the chat function and the clerk of our will give me the speaking order. Councillor Seiler, let's begin with you. Thank you, Mayor Todd, and thank you for the, present, the presentation there, Mike, and and what have you. It uh, looks very interesting. It uh, it's going to make a big difference in that area, and I, I hope that it'll fit in very well. I guess uh, with my years being in, on recreation and in and, and the ballparks and, and doing stuff up at the park, uh, uh, my question is lighting and security. Uh, did you just, uh, think about like with security? I know we've had some problems up at our Memorial Park. You don't like to talk about it, but it, it, it happens, uh, vandalism and whatnot. So I just wonder if uh, if that was thought about or what have you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Councillor. Um, there is, a in the report, there is a conceptual lighting plan that, we've, that we have proposed, locations of lights. Um, I think lighting would be important. Lighting is, is one of the things that I think as we the project moved to detailed design, you'd want to discuss more. Um, I think in this case, lighting would be critical to the, to the character of the park. But we do run into uh, occasions where municipalities actually prefer not to light their parks because as soon as you light a park, you're suggesting that the park is open for night use. Um, and so I think that becomes a further discussion as you move through into detailed design. As I say, I think because of the memorial aspect, there could be something really special here with lighting that could also add that uh, security part um, as well. Thank you. Councillor Richardson is next. Thank you, through, through your Mayor, Mayor Todd. I think this, um revised plan of uh, concept one and two that looks absolutely incredible. And I think this is going to be um, another gem in our park system that we have, that this is going to be really, really nice. And um, I'm thoroughly looking forward to this. I just had a couple of small questions. I guess they might be more commentary or whatever. Um, the Memorial Arena markers. Um, I had put forth a, or a suggestion was put forth at some point. Is there any way in totally nixed it if Brock has already discussed it or the architects themselves about uh, possibly repurposing some of the existing materials that are in the de uh, decommissioning of the existing arena now? Like even if it's for the markers or something that show a little bit of a pullback from the existing building that was there today, whether it be, I know I quipped about it and I have no idea what the design concept is going to come back for the markers is you know, possibly a steel girder or something like that, like something that was from the old building that was right there to identify the four post and kind of a bit of a throwback um, to the building that stood there for so long and to what happened before. Uh, that was my first comment. And the second comment, um, 
depending on the size of the harvest table uh, that was going to be coming out, was there a thought to possibly covering it, even with the aforementioned existing materials that we've uh, out of the um, out of the existing demolition that's going on right now? Uh, this is one of those things you might have to look at it quicker than you would need to because then all of a sudden they're gone. Um, but just a thought, it could be like a small pavilion, because I do know that the pavilion that we have in the park is a very, very popular item um, uh, feature, and it accommodates most weather, even if it happens to be raining. But depending on how big the harvest terry table area was going to be, perhaps that's uh, food for thought uh, to be put in there. So those are my comments. Other than that, the plan looks exceptional. I think it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of very happy people with this. Um, and I do believe that it, the uh, memorial aspect of it is incredibly classy, uh, given given the site. So kudos to you for everyone who's worked on this, done a good job. But those are my two points about the harvest table and the four-point corner markers and utilizing existing materials that are in the current de uh, demolition. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, so with that, um, I can touch on a few things. So we did explore quite uh, in quite detail, a lot of detail, the, the reuse opportunities. And uh, as recently as a few weeks ago, we've met actually with the demolition team to see if there's anything that we're able to capture as the demolition starts to happen. Uh, to touch on your point about the girders, part of the demolition contract, the, the contractor, I believe, and Amy, correct me if I am wrong, uh, is actually reusing those elsewhere. So they're not available for the park itself. Um, but in terms of other materials that we've explored using, uh, items such as the uh, changing room benches, there are a couple of uh, very older old features there that we're looking at converting into park benches as a possibility through detailed design. Other items that have come up, uh, the, the floor itself and the center ice marker, the contractor is removing that piece of concrete. So we'll be able to put that somewhere on the site. And um, there's also the, the opportunity to look at a few of the original blocks from the original building that are still standing that uh, are still able to be preserved. Some of those things are gonna really be determined on how the demolition proceeds and if they are able to salvage it. But uh, we've put in our, our two cents to say, if the opportunity presents itself, we'd love to have this integrated in the park because with the site, there's many options to do different features such as those. Um, another thing that came up out of interest is that the original floor for the arena still exists underneath the newer concrete pad. So the contractor is also looking at trying to salvage some of that original floor that exists there. Uh, for the markers, though, we would we look at all different options, alternative options. Um, unfortunately, the girders girders aren't uh, available for this. But just to kind of touch on your on your question, counselor, we are definitely trying to explore what can be salvaged and even uh, what happens with detailed design. If it's us or another consultant pushing through with that, uh, we want to make sure that those things are available for that opportunity. And for the second question. Would you be able to remind me of your second question, Councillor? The the possibility of covering the, uh, yes. thank you, David, the covering of the harvest table, or the, depending on the size to make it like a, like a small yes. mini pavilion that we have up there now. Perfect. Yeah, and so that is definitely something we could, exp that could be explored through detailed design. And the current, uh, current plans, we have the harvest table, obviously, with nothing covering it, but it could be something that is explored further in detailed design. As you know, they're, def they're very popular features in parks and having a space like that. Um, we we've seen parks where they're uncovered, parks where they are covered, but if there's a bit of a precedent that exists nearby, it could be something that's explored uh, through detailed design. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rothwell, you're next. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd. And uh, thanks again to uh, David and Michael and the rest of your staff at SHIFT. Uh, for working with uh, our staff and our uh, council and the members of the public to uh, come up with this exceptional design. The care and attention to detail uh, for this uh, memorial and park space, I think is, uh, is to be appreciated uh, by everyone. Uh, being on the Recreation Advisory Committee, uh, we did have the opportunity for your presentation last week and uh, uh, certainly I uh, can convey the same that uh, Amy uh, Gangle did is that uh, we were certainly impressed and I know uh, in conversations with the uh, friends of the 59 they were certainly impressed uh, with the uh, work and efforts that you have moved forward on. Uh, without uh, going any further the one question I just if you could uh, elaborate that came up at uh, RAC last week as well 
was the issue of uh, the uh, proposed uh, skating area and the uh, the large uh, park area. And if you could just talk to, uh, specifically about uh, the issues of the existing servicing, the water, and, and what's proposed uh, for uh, potential flooding and so on, as well as the issue of uh, uh, washroom facilities at some point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, yeah, so one of the questions that came up, uh, as was alluded to at RAC, was how we deal with water servicing for the site. And this is another question that we are able to resolve by working with the demolition company. So with the current facility, obviously it has a service running to it. And the intent is for that to be capped off through the demolition in a way such that we are able to connect to that in the future. And so that might involve irrigation for the site. It might involve um, a hose bib so we could flood the site in the winter in that open lawn area so you can actually have an opportunity to do that, um, as well as other features that could draw on water. But we wanted to ensure, again, that leaving the site in a way that we're able to not have to redo work in order to have the park done later. So that's how it's being left right now. Um, in terms of washrooms themselves, we have not explored that for this um, for this concept. It's currently not part of our master plan design. Uh, if it was something that was desired in the future with the detailed design work, it would have to be explored beyond beyond what we've really allowed for with the master plan. Um, I'll open it to Amy if you have any other further input on that. But from our perspective, uh, it was not included through the master plan process. Yes, thank you, David. Um, yeah, there was some um, some discussions uh, with regards to washrooms and um, even you know publics and considerations when this design concept was there. Um, and the uh, main discussion was to take a look at the park as a whole, the the Lisswell Memorial Park as an entity, okay. and looking at the entire facility and and where uh, would be you know best suited for some washrooms. Um, we do have current washrooms in the List Memorial uh, Park. However, you know, in its future, with it connected to the pool, there's that possibility it may need to have our um, renovation, refurbishment, or an expansion to become a uh, accessible, larger, um, you know, f f all four seasons washrooms, and it would be more of a centralization of the entire park, accessible for all of the points of that area. But again, you know, if, if that was something that was a strong push to really need it in this area, that could be something that we would look at in the future. Um, but there's maybe some other alternatives. There's some uh, shed areas where the um, John Bell South is. There could be some some components there might be able to do that, or perhaps a space beside the um, curling club or some some other pieces to that. If that was something that was uh, identified as a need in that section of the park. Thank you, David. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Next up is Councillor Andreessen. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mayor Todd. Um, I just also want to, of course, thank um, Shift Landscape and David and Michael for your presentation. Um, you've really reflected um, the importance of the memorial and um, captured um, the memories that we want to really keep. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, my, my question has pretty much been answered through um, Councilor Rothwell's question. I do have some comments, but I can save those um, to the comment section. Thank you. Councilor Behrens is next. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, thank you to David and Mike and Amy. Um, Earlier today, I had asked Amy for the comments, the actual comments from the survey. And Amy, thank you very much for me. It helps to understand the perspectives of people when they're making the comments and to understand the entire design. And I just want to echo the comments um, of all the previous speakers in that the design is exceptional. And thank you for all your time and effort on that to everyone involved. Um, just a couple of, of questions. Um, there was a comment about, and I noticed in the design, where the sensory play is specifically behind the houses. And there was a comment about potentially 
maybe moving um, that aspect to some other. I didn't know if anything was more was given on that. That's my first question. Um, my second one is, what is the memorial bench? Is that the memorial, like, itself, or in the in the financial aspect of it, there's a memorial bench, and I was just wondering where that was. That's number two. Number three is in some of the pictures, there's like little tables for seating in that, and I I apologize, I maybe missed it, where uh, that people could enjoy like a small picnic lunch or a coffee at an actual little table, and I'm just wondering where that might be in the design. And I believe my last one is um, we have a beautiful marker up at Millennium Park. And I'm just wondering, did anyone consider perhaps moving it? We know that M Millennium Park is maybe going to get a revamp at some time. I just wondered if anyone considered moving it. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful as well, moving it to this location. Those are my questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So I'm going to go through these and please let me know if there is anything that I miss. Um, so with the sensory play, definitely it was something that we explored locating in a few different options. One of the things that we run into with playgrounds often is trying to find a good place for them, it's trying to stay away from roads while also trying to avoid heavier traffic areas and trying to organize the programming on the site so you don't have conflict. And in terms of that exploration, uh, it came down to that corner being a little bit further away from the road and also connected to the circulation system where we could tuck it in to be somewhere where we're not getting a lot of vehicle traffic. And also one of the aspects of the sensory garden itself is that we want that to expand beyond that area that's defined as a playground. So the idea of pathways that move into the garden areas and really to extend that experience. So blurring those lines always poses a bit of an issue when we bring it close to roads. So that was really one of the things that drove the location of it. Um, but to answer your question, it was definitely something that we explored. The next item that you mentioned is the, the thought around the memorial bench. And uh, apologies, I, I could have clarified that through the presentation. The intent with that is really to have just a bench location near that memorial space. So the wall that, uh, the wall that we're proposing, that sculpture, just a custom bench that can be at a location where you can sit and view that wall. And that's the intent with that. So it serves the memorial and it's a customized bench to do that. The next item that you mentioned uh, was around tables and opportunities for seating and little table venues throughout the space. One of the things that we have right now is the harvest table that you mentioned. And the other piece, uh, I believe you're uh, paying attention or noting those uh, movable tables that we showed in the tree grove. So right now, what we're not, uh, we don't have that as a fixed element in the space. It's something again through detailed design, if we want to ex expand that idea of the harvest table and have some more individualized seating opportunities, that can be something that could be added uh, as a little spot along a pathway potentially. Not something that we have currently in the plan. The focus is really on that one large, that significant table space as that, uh, that surface that you could um, have lunch at or meet with someone at or drink a coffee at, that sort of thing. And for the last question, um, we did not explore the, uh, the idea of moving that marker from the uh, millennial, Millennium Park, sorry. Uh, if that is something that there is a desire to do within the community, we can, that could be something that could be looked at again through detailed design. One of the things with uh, the space right now is that there could be opportunities for that. And I'll leave it to Amy if you want to touch on that a little bit further. Yes, thank you, David. Um, yeah, Councilor Barons and, and uh, members of council, uh, just so that you know, that was actually part of the original discussions that happened several months ago. Um, and it was actually an expression from the individuals of the Friends of 59 at that meeting who actually preferred for it not to be moved. Um, and their reasoning was it was nice within the community that there were different areas where people could go to reflect within North Perth so they could go to Steve Kerr to see that memorial they could go to the library to see this and then a third one where they could go to the park to see that now that said if there's any changes to the memorial or the Millennium Park and it does need to be moved I think they would be more than happy to have that relocation but that was their initial request at that time so there is some flexibility but just so that you understand we are, are 
that we can explain that we did have those conversations and that was the the information that we received at the beginning so that's why we did not make that request to shift landscape thank you uh, next is councillor anstead thanks mayor Kasenberg. through and i won't uh, i'll just be brief because i know every other councillor has uh, spoke on this um, just briefly, I think everybody can agree that uh, this is a very thorough process and I want to thank everybody for that. David and uh, Michael, you guys have done a great job. Really appreciate it. Your consultation with the public and with RAC has been, has been great, very transparent the entire time. One question I did have, just looking at the estimates that you have put forward was just surrounding uh, um, the planting uh, section. Just looking at soil import, I'm just wondering if you can touch on that. Like, is this separate from soil testing or is this going to be, is any soil going to be able to use, be used from the current site or is this all going to be stuff that's going to have to be brought in? Um, just wondering if you can touch on that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a bit of a, a recent win from that column that uh, Amy would be happy to share as well. So again, through this process of working with the demolition team, one of the initial intents was for all that concrete material from the arena to be buried on site just to to lose that so one of the things that we've worked with them um, on is actually replacing that with some soil and having good soil on the site because one of the things that really this park hinges on is having a good base for plants to grow because we can put a nice thin six inch layer of topsoil on the classic subdivision move um, but nothing's really going to do well there long term so what we want to ensure is that there is good soil on site so with that, we might avoid with the future park development, a bit of that soil import. What that really speaks to though, um, Councillor Enstead, is that it's really the growing medium for the plants. So topsoil in that is typically, we'd bring that in at any park site for the garden spaces. Um, so with the changes, there might be less or more of that, depending on the final detail design, uh, but a bit of two things there. So one, we will still need it to some degree, um, but we also have a bit of a better condition that will be left for the future park now, given everything that's happened. Okay, great, thank you. And if I, if I may very quickly, um, I just wanna really thank you all for your feedback on this. It's been an absolute pleasure for us to be involved with this project. I know, when Mike first brought it up, uh, when we first saw this project come out as an option, it just immediately really struck us. And through this process, we've learned a lot about the community and it's been an absolute pleasure. So really appreciate the feedback and we're, we're really happy that all of this has resonated well with you and that it really reflects the needs of the community. So I just wanna thank you on behalf of Mike and myself. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with, with staff and with the community of uh, North Perth. We look forward to you moving here. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a few questions actually, um, and and they're less about the the design and the work, which I, I, I agree with my colleagues is just outstanding in terms of uh, the attention to the details and the, the the cadence and needs of our community at this point in time, the expressions of interest in, and and. Uh, the concerns that have been expressed. Um, and uh, thank you for dealing delicately with the dog park issue. Um, we know that this is a, a pressing uh, issue in our community and um, it's certainly the opportunity uh, to give feedback uh, through this process has uh, highlighted the fact that our community has a lot of interest in that. Uh, my questions are actually more about uh, the resolution that uh, has been proposed for council uh, of Ms. Gangle tonight. Um, I note that um, you have uh, a, a second part of the resolution, which is that staff being directed to work on developing and implementing a fundraising campaign. And I think that um, uh, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that part of the resolution at this point. I, mean, I need to be honest. I think what we need is a report brought back to council that proposes a fundraising plan and campaign. And I think it needs to set targets and, and timelines as well. I'm also uncomfortable uh, with it because I am concerned about the, the recent process that this council has undertaken trying to understand um, how many hours are needed for various projects and operating duties. And I'm worried that um, if we throw you and your, your fearless uh, colleagues into this, um, that we're just adding uh, you know, a whole lot of extra workload for you. And, and that's something that this council, as you know, has been trying to, to manage for all of our departments. So I guess what I'm saying is, um, one, I'd like you to respond to the question about um, timing and, and, and time availability to commit to this project. And two, two 
Um, I would like to suggest perhaps that our resolution is revised so that what happens is a report comes back next about fundraising for this, um, this opportunity. Um, your comments, Ms. Gangle? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, my apologies with, with the recommendation. It was a starting point for, for council discussion and, and looking at where we go from here. Um, with regards to the hours, I do not have my business plan memorized. Uh, I think we did have some hours that were indicated in there for staff with regards to this project. Um, whether it's sufficient or not, it really depends on what level of fundraising we want to do and what the commitments would be from, uh, from staff uh, and volunteers to be able to go ahead with that. But um, if we have, uh, if council would like us to have a, a report, we can certainly bring that back. We do ask if there is any specific direction where council might is feeling with regards to the direction of, of, um, of uh, how much fundraising, that would be greatly appreciated. That would then assist us with really focusing on um, how we can frame this. Thanks, Amy. Now, next question. Well, I'll, I'll settle with two here. The um, plan certainly, um, you know, with, with this garden, with this park developed, there is implication for uh, municipal staff time for maintenance. And I'm wondering if you've thought ahead at this point to uh, whether the current staff complement uh, is likely to be able to manage that maintenance or whether we're going to need to add capacity uh, to manage maintenance of, um, of this park uh, in the future. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we. I would say uh, during that initial meeting that we had with Shift Landscape, uh, this is why we incorporated our facility supervisor into that um, engagement because he has a good handle of what is required from a maintenance and that is his conscious that he wants to make sure that they can maintain uh, quality parks all parks within North Perth and having that as his lens very much is a focus. So that was a discussion and that's partly why some of the things that you see chosen in there, some of the different um, grasses uh, that do not have as much of a maintenance um, was chosen so that we be able to manage that and having discussions about how that, that would look. Um, certainly when we get to the detailed planning, there could be uh, a, a lot more intricacy with regards to how those things are laid out for the maintenance to making sure that's a bit more efficient, but definitely have been discussions uh, throughout this entire process. Whether we have sufficient staff, um, you know, that's a question for all of our parks developments that we have because we do have additional green spaces that we have to uh, to look move forward and, and look in our future for um, for the development uh, the manager of facilities when that position is filled may have a better indication or may have some additional focuses that could maybe help us with working what we currently have for this particular park um, I would be you know, pretty optimistic to think that that um, could could move forward once that park is developed. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I will say that, and I think we all understand this, that this will be a showcase park. Um, it, it is going to be uh, quite an outstanding uh, experience from everything that we've seen in the plans at this point in time. Um, any more questions lined up for us? Councillor Barron's? Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I just have a comment about the recommendation, and, and it's probably minor in nature, but a little bit concerning, in that it says that we approve uh, the Memorial Arena Park Master Plan Report, and because so much of the report is still at the conceptual stage, I'm wondering if it is possible to simply receive the report, because from my understanding of the discussion tonight, there's going to be a more detailed report coming back. Um, and I wouldn't want to get into uh, a sticky wicket situation where, you know, something that's going to be proposed later on, because there have been a few comments tonight, um, you know, you have to constantly come back and get 
uh, amendments or whatever because it wasn't in the original report. So I'm just wondering, is it possible to receive or um, simply say approve the conceptual plan type thing? I think you understand where I'm going with this. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Behrens. I was actually contemplating the same thing because approve is a pretty firm uh, action on the part of Council and uh, it's still a little bit uh, ahead of uh, where we're at. I find myself wondering if we shouldn't receive the report for information. that We direct the development of the detailed designs if in fact it's our goal for the purposes of uh, moving this project forward to invest in that as the corporation. And then uh, also commission, as I said, uh, maybe I'm pounding uh, the beat of my own drum here, but uh, commission the, the preparation of a uh, report uh, on uh, approach to fundraising campaign and plan uh, with perhaps a target. And, and Amy, I appreciate what you're saying. You, you would like us to sort of say how much um, of the capital costs of this should be uh, raised from community effort. So that's um, that's a, a hot point. But uh, Councillor Burns, in, in, in short, I agree with your, your premise around uh, receipt and perhaps uh, if, if Council is willing, directing the development of a detailed plan. If, if I could just add one comment with regards to that, my apologies. Um, just to highlight that this, uh, the detailed drawings, uh, you see the breakdown in the report for that. This was not something that was identified in the 2021 capital projects. Um, we didn't, you know, being preliminary uh, with regards to the, the plans and those sort of things. So we, um, that would probably have to be an additional request. Uh, I think it's with the parks, $100,000 for the conceptual plans, drawings, detailed design contracts, contract admin. So maybe not quite that much, um, but upwards to that. I just wanted to be clear with regards to that for council to be aware um, that we don't have approval or within the capital projects of the Little Memorial Park demolition and park conceptual redevelopment plans, um, that that fee would exceed the current budget. I anticipate that. Okay, thanks, Amy. Thank you for making sure that uh, we're honest with our budgeting. Um, we'll have to talk about whether we want to do something about that as a council. Uh, I think CEO Snell wants to make a comment at this point. Yeah, just to, and I, it's kind of been said, and I think Julie even used the words, and and maybe just before we uh, move on to um, um, detailed design, I think we should look at, this would be my recommendation, it would be receiving the report and approving the concept plan. That would allow then us to fundraise because depending on our fundraising target and depending on how fundraising goes, we, the detailed plan also may shift depending on the amount of dollars that would be available. So I think at this stage, probably looking at receiving the report, approving the concept plan um, or final concept plan and um, your direction um, around the fundraising campaign. I, I, I certainly think that's something we could bring back at a future meeting. That's just sort of where I think we need to be at, but that's just, just my recommendation. Sure, so let me just check on one thing with uh, Ms. Gangle then. Um, your expectation is that uh, we would include in the 2022 budget process uh, the funds for developing out the conceptual or from the conceptual that we're seeing now to the detailed, is that sort of what I'm hearing? That is the, uh, that's the hope, yes. Okay, unless this council chooses other roles. Okay, um, so uh, thank you, CAO. Let me, let me summarize then what I've got here. Uh, just to see if council has any significant um, suggestions or modifications. Um, our resolution should consider receiving the report for information and endorsing the conceptual plan for the Memorial Arena Park. Does that sound right? And then uh, with regards to the second part, uh, staff directed to uh, bring a report to council on a uh, proposed uh, fundraising uh, plan and campaign to support a portion of the park project. Does council have any wish to help Amy with determining what proportion 
uh, of the fundraising, uh, capital fundraising, is, uh, is left in the hands of the public. I, I would suggest 50%, actually, but maybe that's too ambitious. Anyone? Pat, do we have anything? Okay, so we're not seeing anything yet. Um, so, Councillor, does anyone have a revision or a suggestion to improve this before I try to actually read a motion into the record about this? Councillor Rothwell, please. Thanks, uh, Mayor Todd. Through you, uh, at our Recreation Advisory Committee, uh, meeting last week, we did um, briefly discuss the, the uh, issue of uh, percentages and so on and decided to, to leave that out uh, based on uh, input from uh, Amy and, and uh, our conversations uh, because not knowing exactly uh, what that uh, uh, anticipation was going to be at Council, we uh, decided to leave it open and uh, perhaps then the issue is as it goes to the public uh, we see how uh, the uh, public's going to respond. Clearly, when the uh, collapse happened in 1959, there was an outpouring support from across the province and, frankly, beyond, uh, well beyond uh, our borders. Uh, and it could be that those that uh, recalled the uh, the tragedy uh, may very well uh, decide that they want to be part of a uh, living uh, memorial uh, tribute. Uh, so, no one has a crystal ball in terms of knowing exactly how that. Uh, public uh, uh, response will, will come in in terms of uh, donations, but it's anticipated that uh, there could be uh, certainly uh, private as well as uh, corporate sponsors that uh, may be willing to, to come forward. So, I mean, that's, there was brief conversation at RAC on that issue, but frankly, that wasn't the, the main mandate uh, for RAC. It was more the uh, concept uh, and moving that forward. Thank you. So um, let me ask Ms. Gangle a question then. If, if we leave you without um, a target, uh, you can bring back to us a few scenarios perhaps with regards to fundraising if we have you bring back a report. Is it reasonable? Ms. Gangle, are you with us? Am I with you? Are we having any transmission problems? Do we know? Hmm. Okay, we're, we're wondering whether we're having some uh, technical problems, but- uh, I think I can hear you now. Okay, so I, I asked if, if we leave you without a funding, like a fundraising target from the public, um, uh, can you bring back a few scenarios to us in your report perhaps? Absolutely. Okay, so why don't we just sort of leave it um, a little uh, loose and, and to your discretion and you'll bring back a couple of ideas. So let me try the resolution. I'm hoping I'm being heard by all. Um, here's what I've got, please. Um, it's just a draft. Uh, that the Council of the Public North Perth receive the Memorial Arena Park Master Plan Report for information. And that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth endorse the conceptual plan for the development of the Memorial Arena Park, and that staff are directed to bring back a report outlining a fundraising plan and campaign uh, to help fund a portion of the Memorial Arena Park projects. Everyone get that? Perhaps the most important person to get that is, is Danette, but uh, Danette, you sort of keeping on, on this? Okay. Um, any revisions or suggestions to improve this before I ask for a mover and second? We're not seeing anything. Okay, uh, Councillor Anstett, would you consider moving this? Yes, I would move that, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Behrens, would you serve as seconder? Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, any further discussion or debate at this point? Okay, we're not seeing anything. Let's let's have the vote.
Who are we missing? Councillor Rothwell, we might have met, lost you from eScribe here. What say you? Councilor yes. Rothwell. Thank you. So with that, that is unanimously yeah. carried. That is unanimously carried. And um, thank you, Council. Uh, team uh, Shift Landscape Architecture, uh, thank you very much so far for your service to the community. Uh, when you move here, I look forward to bringing you a small moving gift and um, and, and gaining your acquaintance face-to-face, uh, -face, even if a mask is still required. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, as a quick aside, I saw that you're uh, a Windsor boy and I am as well. So we'll uh, we'll move to the North Perth and talk about Windsor. That pizza too, right? There you go. <laughs> the big Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, Council. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Chief Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you, Council. Um, that moves us along to item 5.4, a report from the Treasury and Finance Department. As item 5.4.1, finance staff has brought forward for Council review of accounts as of this day, March 8, 2021. Uh, I'll note, of course, that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves from consideration and voting. Um, councillors, are there any questions about this report? We're not seeing any, so uh, let's have a resolution here. It reads as follows. The following summary of accounts be received by council for information. Bottom line total says $2,442,695.82. Can I call on uh, uh, Councillor Johnston to be our mover for this one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our second? I will second that. Thank you. Next discussion or debate from Council. Okay, let's have that vote. And we're missing one. Is it Councillor Rothwell again? No, he's there. Okay. okay. I guess is that carried then? That's carried. That's carried with our abstentions noted. All right. It, thank you. Sorry. It was Mayor Kaysenberg. You you forgot to vote there. I didn't vote. That's terrible. Okay, there we go. That's carried. Oh, my bad tonight. How about that? Um, all right, thank you. Let's move on to an item uh, which pertains to the natural consequences of last week's action by this council to approve its 2021 operating and project budget. Um, I have a bylaw for our consideration that establishes the tax rates. Uh, it does a whole bunch of uh, fun things related to Stormwater management and uh, list will BIA. Uh, treasurer Hale, or well, actually, it should be uh, Ms. Belfour, our deputy treasurer. Um, any any comments um, you'd like to make about this one? Thank you, Mayor Todd and Council. Uh, you've reiterated uh, about uh, the budget being passed at the March first meeting, and uh, with that being done, that allows us to uh, calculate the tax rates uh, with the assessments provided by MPAC uh, with our area boundaries and tax class ratios that the county passed last Thursday. Um, so do note that there is a new tax class that I've included in the tax rate bylaw that's NT, it's for row housing. MPAC has contacted us to say that there will be a supplemental billing coming for that new tax class so that we don't have to go back to council when that comes through, we put it in, in the tax rate bylaw already for this year. Um, so that being said, uh, the tax rates have been calculated and they're there before you uh, for approval. And uh, same with the uh, stormwater levy. So if there are any questions, I am here to answer. Thanks, Ms. Belfour. Council, any questions or first comments on this matter? 
We're not seeing any, so I have a resolution. It is a bylaw resolution. It reads as follows, that bylaw number 26-2021 a bylaw being a bylaw to establish tax rates for the year 2021 uh, being introduced read and considered read a first second and third time and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and be sealed with the seal of the corporation well, the reading is not spectacular tonight um deputy mayor callum the, the would you consider moving that one through you mayor todd absolutely i will make that motion Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, would you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. This time I'll remember to vote, I promise. I'm in favor of my East Drive timed out. It's Alan here. Yeah, thank you. So that is here. And uh, let's move on then to item 5.4.3. We have received indication from the province of Ontario about our allowed debt repayment limit for 2021. This is an indication about a limit generated by a formula in the interest of municipalities remaining financially stable and solvent. This is not an indication of our intent. We could use it, but we do not have plans to push to the limit based on our current budgeting. Um, Ms. Hale, did you have any further comments to make? No, I think you summed it up very well. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. That is what it is. And under uh, the legislation, I'm just bringing it forward to you this evening for your information. Thanks, Fran. I think I'm finally learning a thing or two about the rhythm of, uh, of all right. Um, so we have a resolution for our consideration uh, that reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the 2021 annual repayment limit report from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing for information. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion, debate, or questions about this? This is what they'll allow us to borrow. It's not what we're borrowing. <laughs> okay, let's, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you very much. And next up, uh, we received a bit of happy news uh, reflected under item 5.4.4 from the province of Ontario about additional and unanticipated funds flowing to North Perth with our consent pertaining to safe restart in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, by letter, I was advised that we may receive $103,400 in provincial sustaining funds to support our efforts in COVID-19 recovery. We need to authorize our treasurer to sign agreements expressing willingness to receive those funds. So I have a resolution to that effect. Um, I don't think there's any additional comments, Ms. Hale, is, are there anything? No, thank you. Thanks. Uh, resolution is as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth received a safe restart agreement funding letter dated March 4th, 2021 for information and authorizes the Director of Finance Treasurer to sign the funding acknowledgement to be returned, re returned sorry, to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. In other words, this is how we get our money. Um, uh, can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you serve a seconder tonight on that one? Yes, I will. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I am in favor, Mayor Kaysenberg, but it did not come up. Thanks, Councillor Barons. We were just about to call. So with that, that's carried. Thank you. 
Um, that brings us to um, a section of our agenda where we have uh, no reports this evening. Uh, we're not going to hear from environmental services, operations, or fire. But as always, we know that they're working diligently in their duties in our community, and we express our ongoing gratitude for all of their service uh, to us on our behalf. Let me skip ahead then to item six on our agenda. Uh, for item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or our committees at this time? Again, use the chat function to uh, let us know you want the floor. Anything for your thoughts? No, we're not seeing anything there. Um, that moves us to item seven. We have received no items of correspondence beyond that already shared, including that lovely letter for $103,400. We're gonna reverse that. Had dyslexia. Okay, uh, next that brings us to item eight on our agenda, which allows council to consider and act bylaws. We have no deliberate propositions there tonight. That brings us to item nine on our agenda. Are there any notices of motion from councillors attending this evening? Okay, we're not seeing any indication of that. That brings us to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Again, indicate through the chat window, please. CAO Snell. Thank you again, Mayor. And I maybe could have put this under correspondence, but, um, and I'm not sure if all members of council received it because it was the way it was delivered, but the Perth Federation of Agriculture has ar arranged their um, spring um, MPP MP meeting, and it is scheduled for Friday, uh, March the 19th. Traditionally, the mayor has attended that uh, meeting, but this year they are asking for um, two members um, to attend the meeting. So I just um, wondered if we could make sure that we have um, two members in attendance. I think uh, Mayor Todd has already confirmed with me that he is available, and we, so we would need one other member from council. I, of course, need my, my farming education. Uh, so yes, I'd like to attend. Uh, any other councillors uh, interested in the opportunity of joining me on that uh, occasion? Councillor Rothwell? Okay. Anyone else? Hey, I think you're being uh, voluntold then, Alan. You get to enjoy my company and the company of uh, other uh, pleasant uh, politicians uh, for that uh, occasion. Glad to have you on board. Look forward, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, uh, any other announcements? Okay, uh, that brings us to I agenda item number 11. Uh, we have no matters for consideration in the closed session council tonight. That allows us to skip past item 12, which is the return and report session. Uh, we don't have anything to report or a meeting that didn't happen. Uh, Council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of the meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what's called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft for that here that I'll read into the record that bylaw number 27-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed, and that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and the Clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on, uh, let's see here, um, I need to make sure I get this right. Um, Councillor Johnston, can you serve as our mover for that one? I would definitely uh, move that. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our second? I would be happy to second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? There's a cheerfulness in the bylaw that I think is atypical. Anyway, um, okay, let's have that vote. We're thinking there should be one more, but maybe we're wrong. 
It's right. Andreessen and is about Kessler Barons. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, that is carried then. Thank you. And um, sorry, we're, 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 we're counting names there. Just to make sure we got that right. Um, so, uh, councillors, we've completed the deliberation, taken action on the business that has come before us tonight, some of it quite exciting, in fact. Uh, before I uh, read a motion to adjourn, is there any further business? Seeing none, I have a resolution that reads as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 8.30 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, March 15, 2021, at 7 p.m. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for that? Yes, I will make that motion and uh, congratulations, Corey Connors. <laughs> Good point. Good point. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our second for that one tonight? On both matters, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's not debatable, so let's have that vote. Did we lose connection to the technology? Oh, there, we, there we go, thank you. And that concludes that voting. That is carried. Thank you. Um, council, this meeting uh, is uh, to return again next Monday evening using digital technologies. In other words, the same bat channel, same bat time. And until then, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks all. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.